Hair loss and thinning in women is alarmingly common. In fact, at least 50% of women will experience it by age 50, with many women reporting worsening hair loss, specifically during perimenopause. If you've noticed unexplained hair loss and you suspect it has something to do with your hormonal life stage, keep watching, because in this video, I'm going to explain four of the most common root causes of hair loss and thinning in perimenopausal and menopausal women. And I'll also be sharing functional medicine strategies to address these root causes. If you're a female suffering from hair loss and thinning, there's a good chance you've been dismissed, condescended to, or even shrugged off by your doctor. I've heard from hundreds of women who are left frustrated by healthcare providers who consider hair loss an issue of vanity or cosmetics and therefore don't take it seriously. But hair loss and thinning have significant cultural and social ramifications for women, and it often leads to very real anxiety and distress. And more importantly, it always points to deeper health concerns like chronic stress, nutrient deficiency, and hormone imbalances. For this reason, it should come as no surprise that hair loss and thinning are triggered or worsened by the hormonal shifts associated with perimenopause and menopause. With the decline of reproductive hormones like estrogen and progesterone comes the loss of their supportive and tissue-maintaining functions, including those that support healthy hair. It can be helpful to think about perimenopause as a time when your weak spots are revealed. Those underlying dysfunctions that were once buffered by estrogen, progesterone, or even testosterone. For some, this shift happens gradually, while others seem to fall off a hormonal cliff, leaving them vulnerable to a host of distressing symptoms and chronic conditions, including hair loss. Additionally, perimenopause and menopause tend to happen at an age and life phase when other underlying problems start to surface. Problems like poor thyroid function, androgenic dominance, and micronutrient deficiencies. All three of these can contribute to hair loss and stunted hair regrowth. This overlap complicates the assessment and strategic treatment of hair loss, and it can be tricky to untangle. So in this video, I'm gonna be discussing four of the root causes for hair loss in women that tend to happen because of or tend to coincide with perimenopause and menopause. Just to be clear, these aren't the only root causes for hair loss and thinning, and I do have a resource for you that covers additional root causes. More on that in a bit. It's my goal to help you assess and understand the reason for your hair loss more precisely so that you can identify additional or alternative strategies and avoid the shotgun treatment approach that I see all too often. The first root cause on our list is suboptimal ferritin. Notice that I didn't say low ferritin, because even ferritin levels that are within a normal range, according to the lab, might not be high enough to combat or resolve hair loss. Research suggests that anything less than 50 micrograms per liter is insufficient to regrow hair. I typically aim for a ferritin measuring 70 to 150 micrograms per liter with my female clients. So what is ferritin and why does it matter? Ferritin is a protein that stores iron in your cells, safely transports it in the blood, and releases it when your body needs more iron. We need ferritin because while iron is a super helpful micronutrient for your body, free iron is actually toxic to your cells, so it needs to be bound up or buffered when it's stored. That's ferritin's job, to keep a reserve of iron that's ready to go when your body needs it without exposing your cells to harmful free iron. So, when we measure your levels of ferritin in the blood plasma, we get a sense for how much of a backup stash of iron your body has at its disposal, as opposed to measuring iron in your blood directly, which is more common than measuring ferritin. When ferritin is suboptimal, we call this latent iron depletion, and it can result in symptoms like hair loss, fatigue, depression, and even anxiety. Sounds like a list of symptoms for perimenopause, doesn't it? It makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Another common symptom of perimenopause is heavy periods with moderate to severe bleeding. This blood loss can quickly deplete iron stores and result in suboptimal or low ferritin, 
which can then worsen hair loss or make it really tough to regrow. Even if you don't have heavy periods, you may have suboptimal ferritin. For more causes of latent iron depletion, stick around at the end of this video. I've lined up another one all about the root causes of low ferritin. The second cause of hair loss during perimenopause and menopause is androgenic hormones and hormone metabolites. You might recognize the word androgenic from the term androgenic alopecia, which is a common diagnosis for women and men, actually, with hair loss. In fact, androgenic alopecia is considered the most common cause of hair loss, affecting over 30 million women and people assigned female at birth in the United States. About a third of all women will experience this pattern of hair loss in their lifetime. And yet, it's still poorly diagnosed and mostly untreated. This type of hair loss and thinning goes by a few different names, androgenic alopecia, female pattern hair loss, and female pattern baldness. But all of these describe the same root cause of hair loss and thinning, overproduction of androgen hormones and metabolites like DHT. If you've been told you have androgenic alopecia by a healthcare professional, you may also have been told that there's not much you can do about it. Maybe you were told it's genetic and you just have to live with it. Or maybe you were told to try a medication like spironolactone, finasteride, or minoxidil to see if it will help. Unfortunately, most doctors don't actually test your androgen hormones before diagnosing this type of hair loss. The good news is that you can test your androgenic hormones like testosterone, androsterone, and DHT yourself using an at-home urine lab called the Dutch Complete. You might even be able to order it through my website. I'll put a link in the video description to more information about this comprehensive test for you. If it turns out that your androgen hormones are imbalanced, there are functional medicine strategies you can use to shift away from pro-androgen biochemical pathways. I've compiled my favorites into a free user guide that you can download via a link in the video description. The third root cause of hair loss and thinning in women, particularly during perimenopause and menopause, is poor thyroid function. I call this phenomenon thyropause, a term that describes common symptoms that often coincide with perimenopause, but have significant overlap with low thyroid function, hair loss, fatigue, weight gain, and depression. When female hormones decline, they rarely do so in a gentle, smooth slope. And this erratic, confusing withdrawal or shutting down of reproductive hormone production by the ovaries specifically progesterone, can trigger hypothyroidism or low thyroid function. When your progesterone drops, it reduces your free or available thyroid hormone, and it can trigger the autoimmunity that is at the root of many cases of low thyroid function. In addition, estrogen spikes can increase something called thyroid binding globulin, which also reduces available thyroid hormone overall. And that is a big deal because most of the 60 million Americans with thyroid dysfunction don't even know that they have it. And given how many options we have for addressing hypothyroid, and given that catching this dysfunction early can prevent other diseases like type 2 diabetes, Raynaud's, and cardiovascular issues, it's important that thyropause symptoms are fully explored instead of ignored. Your thyroid may have been functioning just fine, at least well enough to maintain a normal TSH or thyroid-stimulating hormone, which is the first and often only thyroid lab that is used by conventional doctors. But during perimenopause, all of that can change. So if you're experiencing hair loss, you need complete data about the state of your thyroid function. This means going beyond a simple TSH test to check on the status of your actual thyroid hormones, otherwise known as T3 and T4, as well as thyroid antibodies that may be produced in the case of autoimmune thyroid dysfunction. These are not standard screening tests, but they are crucial to determining if your hair loss is being caused by your thyroid. If your doctor can't or won't order these additional tests for you, you might be able to order your own at-home thyroid testing kit over at my website, and I'll even help you understand the results and come up with some functional medicine treatment strategies. Again, check the video description for the link to this offering. The fourth root cause for perimenopausal hair loss that we're covering in this video is estrogen decline. So a few notes about estrogen during this perimenopausal transition. It's important to remember 
that estrogen levels can rise and fall erratically during this phase, and that typically the decline of progesterone happens first, which can lead to relative estrogen dominance during the early stages of perimenopause. Some women experience slow, gradual symptoms associated with changes in estrogen, while others go from relatively high levels to very low levels practically overnight, resulting in sudden and sometimes extreme symptoms like insomnia, night sweats, weight gain, hot flashes, and of course, hair loss. The reason that hair loss often accompanies estrogen decline is that estrogen helps hair grow faster and stay on the scalp longer by prolonging the anagen phase, also known as the growth phase or active phase, of the hair cycle. When estrogen levels drop, hair follicles go into a resting phase, which can cause hair to fall out. This can lead to significant hair thinning, especially when many follicles enter the resting phase at the same time. Estrogen also affects the production of natural oils that keep hair smooth and healthy feeling. So when levels drop, hair can feel more dry and brittle. It can be helpful to assess your hormone levels, along with their metabolites or detox products, during perimenopause for many reasons, including hair loss. But a random blood test probably isn't going to get you the information you need, because there's much, much more to the story than serum estradiol and progesterone. And it can be tough to convince your doctor to order these tests, because most providers don't recognize the value of treating perimenopause and its symptoms. That's why I suggest ordering your own Dutch Complete Hormone Test. Not only will you get information about androgenic causes of hair loss, you'll also learn about your progesterone levels, all three estrogens, and estrogen detox pathways and metabolites, all of which can contribute to hair loss during perimenopause and menopause, and all of which can be addressed with functional medicine strategies. Like I mentioned, you may be able to order your Dutch Complete through my website, and I'll even help you interpret it. So be sure to check out the video description for those links. It's important to note that there are more causes of hair loss and thinning that may be less associated with the perimenopause and menopausal transition, but are instead rooted in gut health, micronutrients, and even chronic stress. If you're interested in a more detailed explanation of these root causes, I cover them in depth in my hair loss deep dive tutorial, which includes many options for treatment as well. And it's also important to remember that it takes a long time to see results when treating hair loss and thinning, even with pharmaceuticals. So if someone is claiming that they've noticed a difference in their hair thickness in just a few weeks because of a supplement or a diet, it's time to be skeptical. Slowing hair loss and regrowing hair thickness is a months to years process. So it's crucial to stay consistent and not give up too quickly. I think it helps to also keep in mind that when you're addressing hair loss and thinning at the root cause, you're also getting tons of other benefits, like healthier metabolism, better immune function, and you're doing a lot of disease prevention as well. If you've been struggling with hair loss and you're in perimenopause or menopause, I'd encourage you to take this video as a sign that you're ready for the next step. Maybe that means ordering an at-home test kit, signing up for the hair loss deep dive tutorial, or grabbing some of my suggested ferritin support supplements. Once you know which root cause or causes apply to your specific situation, you can come up with an action plan based on real data. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this information helpful, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. And be sure to check out the links in the video description for additional resources for functional hair growth. Feel free to stick around. I've got another video all queued up for you. Thanks again and we'll see you in the next one.